technology is exploding exponentially. Exponentially means not linear, one, two, three, four, five, six, but one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Moore's law, Metcalfe's law, Wright's law, and so on. What that means today, we're sitting here, we're probably at level four on this curve. In 16 months, it's eight, 32, 64. So in 10 years, we are 256. In 10 years, our world will be 80 times as different as today. Can you imagine? I mean, if you're ever going to have kids, think about that for a second. Your kids will live in a world that's very likely to be 100,000 to a million times as fast and as different as today. Knowledge work, which is what we're doing mostly, is deeply impacted. Because first you have to ask a question, what kind of knowledge is important? And clearly, simple knowledge will still be important, but the computers can do it. For example, if I ask ChatGPT about how to, how to fix my camera, how to connect my camera to my computer, I can get every possible answer and, and solve the problem. I cannot ask ChatGPT about philosophical problems. I, I get an answer, but it's useless. So, education must reboot. Right now, education is about learning facts, parenthesis, for later use, downloading information. Today, we have to learn something that machines can't do. So, if you go into school to memorize information for later, so you can help your client look at a business case from 14 years ago, you are in trouble. Because the client will be able to look up anything they want themselves. So it's an interesting part of what happens with education here. And clearly, in this world, we have the first step is cognification. Everything is becoming smart. There's data everywhere. Data in your car, data on your mobile phone, data in the cloud, data about you know, your apps and what you're doing. So everything is becoming smart. Then we have augmentation where humans are being augmented, for example, with virtual reality, uh, brain-computer interfaces, and of course, mobile phones. And you know, very soon, in 2030, roughly, we will be able to upload our brain to the internet. I mean, I don't know what the point would be, but I, I suppose you could. <laughs> and people are arguing that this is a good thing. I think it's not a good thing, but basically, augmentation will be everywhere. And, and you know, this is already an augmentation. This is my second brain. And for some people, it's the first brain, you know, when they don't have anything else they can be doing. And the last part, of course, is virtualization. Right now with the new Apple thing, the uh, Vision Pro, it's a great tool. And really what it is, it's a television on your face. I mean, the stuff you can watch here is truly amazing. And it's going to be some time. But, but visualization and virtualization means we can go into virtual context. We can study remotely. We can dive into, like... You remember Tom Cruise's Minority Report? We go inside the data and pull out the data and take a look. I mean, if you're a doctor, amazing, right? A lawyer. Right? If, if you're the police and you want to take a look at who else was there, you just pull out the data, you click the button, off the person goes to jail. I mean, this is what happened in, in Israel now with the war in, uh, that's happening down there. They use AI to target people. It's the most bizarre use of this technology. I mean, it's basically everywhere now. AI, artificial intelligence, is the new general purpose technology. General purpose means we use for everything. Printing press, fire, internet, the computer, the cell phone. You know, those are general purpose technologies. Basically what that means is since ChatGPT kind of brought this Sputnik moment, you know, the birth of AI, now we have this moment where that's basically becoming a part of everything. And technology companies, I work for a lot of technology companies, they love this because AI is the saving grace for technology. All of a sudden, technology is hip again.